Hey everybody and welcome to video 2 covering topic 9.1 in AP Calculus BC. Example number 2. We're going to take a look at another graph of this uh, pair of parametric equations and kind of see how neat sometimes these things can, can really come out to, to be. So here we go. Uh, parametric equation number 2. It says that we want to sketch the graph described by these parametric equations. And so we have x is equal to sine of pi t over 2 and y is equal to 2 t, sorry. And you can see that our t values will go from 0 to 6. So as always, we have a little chart that we set up and we tend to want to use the integer values here as best we can. And you'll notice that in the chart, I actually don't even have the values of 0 in. And, you know, it's really important that we, we make sure that we include all of the values that we really need. So if I don't have zero as a, as a table, uh, a heading in my table, it's not a big deal. I mean, I could kind of add that idea down here and say, there's my zero. And I could figure out the sine of zero pi over two very easy. It's zero and y is also zero. So we basically know that we're starting down here at this point. Things, though, start to get a little bit more interesting when you plug in these other values. So if you plug in 1, you've got the sine of pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is indeed 1. And of course, when we let y or t be 1, y is going to be 1. So that's going to send us right here to this point. Plugging in 2, we get the sine of 2 pi over 2, also known as the sine of pi. The sine of pi is 0 but then y is still going to be 2, which lands us up here. Plugging in 3, the sine of 3 pi over 2, that's one that you might have to think about just a little bit, but it's actually going to give you a negative 1 value, and if you haven't figured it out by now, the y values are just going to mimic the t value. They're going to be the same. So that puts us here at negative 1, 3. Now by now, you might get a little idea about where this thing is going. If t is 4, the sine of 4 pi over 2 is the same as the sine of 2 pi, which is 0. y is still 4. And I think we're just starting to kind of snake around back and forth here. The sine of 5 pi over 2, it is positive 1. You have to kind of extend that graph of sine out a little bit. And I think you'll see it. And then we're going to finish up with the sine of 6 pi over 2, also known as the sine of 3 pi, which is back to 0. And our y value is 6. So it's really not a big surprise that when you connect these dots and you would be able to connect all the continuous points between them, you would get something that looks a little bit like that. Forgive the artistic ability. It's close. And we know that we would stop at that very top value. But we should also realize that the orientation of this graph is exactly the way that we depict it when we sketch the dots. You don't have to put all of the arrows that I showed, but at least one of them would be required in order for you to really display this graph in the correct fashion. Let's take a look and see what technology does for this problem. Once again, we're using the TI Inspire CX2 premium software to demonstrate this. You can graph this pretty much on any graphing calculator. We'll go into a parametric mode and we're going to enter our x function, which was the sine of the fraction pi times our t divided by 2. And then the y function was just simply t. And if I remember correctly, we were graphing from 0 to 6. Remember, we don't worry about changing the step size. And then our graph, we hope, does look a little bit familiar to you. And if we put this in motion, by using our trace path plot feature, we can sit back and watch it all unfold after we hit the play, excuse me, the play button. And indeed, this graph is pretty much behaving the way that we just depicted uh, with, with pencil and paper. So this will conclude just the introduction of graphing parametric equations. We're going to move into Oh, the little bit uh, more sort of minutia with parametric equations and what you can do with them as we uh, head into some calculus concepts. So hopefully this helps out. We'll see you at the next video.